Looking for the best card game accessories? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products providing priceless protection. Shop at Ultimate Guard through the link in the description and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Games video. Today we're taking a look at Kethys Combo, which has been a staple in Historic for quite some time, but I think now it's even better than ever with the addition of Agatha's Soul Cauldron, which can potentially copy Kethys' ability if it's in the graveyard, so we can still start comboing even without Kethys on the battlefield. So the deck operates by milling ourselves with Jace, then if we have enough cards in the graveyard, the goal is usually to have Kethys, using its ability to exile two legendary cards from our graveyard, until end of turn we can then replay legendary cards from our graveyard that are currently in there and then we usually want to loop a double Mox Amber to then make mana, especially nice if we have Kinnon in play, which will then generate an additional mana, so every Mox Amber makes two mana, can loop those thanks to Kinnon, as long as we have enough legendaries to exile to the ability, and then once we have a lot of blue mana, we can just loop a few copies of Jace, and then after milling ourselves initially, we can start milling the opponent, and it only takes three or four Jaces to win the game. So it does take a little bit of setup, but once we get going, it's actually not too bad, and a lot better than this combo used to be with the Excavator, now it's a lot faster to win the games with Mox Amber and Jace. So let's take a look at some of the other cards in the deck. At one mana we've got Delighted Halfling, also very nice against counter spells, making our legendaries uncounterable, and then can also potentially fix our mana to play Kethys, since as you'll see we don't have a lot of white mana in our mana base. Then a Chromatic Star, also very nice alongside Kinnon, as it will make an additional mana when we sacrifice it, in addition to drawing a card, and also very nice to loop with Emery, so we can keep drawing cards turn after turn, also discounts Emery so we can get it down faster. Then we've got, of course, Mox Amber, a key part of the deck, and usually want to find a few copies to start comboing. And then Arona, also very useful here, can draw and discard, and as we play, Legendaries can untap, so we can use the ability once again. Also potentially nice to exile with Soul Cauldron, so we can give the ability to a different creature in play. Then a Kinnon gives us additional mana with Halfling, Mox Amber, Chromatic Star, even possibly Jigantha, which is our companion, which also can be cast sometimes, especially if we already have a Kinnon in play, makes it easier to pay the 3 mana companion tax and then cast the 5 mana Elk. And then at 3 mana we've got the full set of Emery, just a nice way to mill a few cards in the graveyard to kickstart Kethys and to get value with Soul Cauldron, Chromatic Star and Mox Amber. And then a Tyvar is also pretty nice here, as it can get back some of our cheaper creatures with the minus 2 in addition to milling a few cards. And then giving our abilities haste is also quite useful, can immediately activate Emery, Rona, can tap the Halfling for mana, so the ability also comes up. And then of course the full set of Kethys, which is the centerpiece of our deck. And then Jace, not only a win condition, but also an enabler by putting cards into our graveyard in the first place. And with a discount from Kethys, only cost 3 mana to get the 5 loyalty version. And then our mana base has a few goodies, Plaza of Heroes can protect some of our key legends. And then the channel lands are also incredibly important, since they count as legendaries that we can exile from our graveyard with Kethys, so we can start playing other legendaries from our graveyard instead. So just having the legendary type is already quite useful, but of course they have additional utility, bouncing stuff, getting creatures back from the graveyard, or maybe dealing with artifacts, enchantments, or non-basic lands. And then a few more dual lands here for mana fixing. The Overgrown Tomb and Breeding Pool we can also get if the opponent uses their Boseju, so we don't necessarily need to play a basic land, since there's not a lot of Field of Ruin in Historic, so just important to have a card with a basic land type, such as Overgrown Tomb and Breeding Pool. And then a few of the fast lands here also make sense, since our deck can easily operate on only 3 or 4 lands. And then a Citadel offers additional mana fixing. Mana Confluence is a bit painful, but also helps when trying to cast some early green and blue cards, while still having black and white mana for Kethys. And then of course Gigantha as our companion. So let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, and our hand's missing some early plays here. Can I still keep? Probably not enough self-mill to go around. Take a mulligan. This is better. So we've got Halfling, Mox Amber, Emery. May be able to get rid of Cauldron or a land. I guess we can get rid of a land here. Turn one Prospectors, our opponent on Goblins.
Turn to Snoop, finding Warchief. So yeah, they've got a potential turn 4 Muxus coming up. Kethis is a good draw. So we can play a cheap Emery. If we play Cauldron first, especially. Mill the Chromatic Star. And pass a turn. Could exile Runa to give that ability to one of our creatures. They don't have a good attack into Emery at least, so Cauldron helps there, so our opponent passes. And uh, do we want to give Runa's ability to the Halfling, perhaps? I will need the Halfling if I want to play Kethys. And I'm not really in a position to combo off without Jace. So I might need Soaring City to bounce Warchief so they can Muxus me next turn. Which is reasonable. So let's just uh, take our draw step for now. Kinon potentially helps. So then Halfling, Mox Amber make additional mana. And so does Chromatic Star. So let's start here. I'll sacrifice for blue. Fine, Jace, okay. So now we're getting pretty close to comboing. I think it's still safer to channel Soaring City on Warchief for a turn so we don't get uh, Muxist. Since that could kill us. And then we'll pass. Goblin Matron can find Muxus if they don't have it already. And they can also now use Snoop with a Bandit Lord's ability. So opponent does have a Muxus in hand now. And I guess they shuffled the deck, so now Chieftain's next, and an Iron Crag feet. Okay, so opponent will be able to play Muxus after all. And, uh, yeah, that happens. Hopefully it's not too good. All that at the very least finds a Chieftain. Alright, could have been worse. Still gets a healthy attack in, but we can actually ambush the uh, Chieftain here with Kinnom. Could also exile the opponent's creatures. Prospector's ability could actually come in handy. Although I guess our creatures aren't goblins, so never mind. Um, yeah, maybe Runa's ability could help out. So we're at 10. Find another Kinnom. So step one is going to be to get back Chromatic Star. Could activate Kinnon first to draw and discard. Get rid of an extra Kinnon. And a land is useful. So now I could play Kethys. And then still sack Chromatic Star for blue. Play Jace. Milling ourselves and then just hoping for another Mox Amber, pretty much. You cannot win. Retreat if I and I did see one. Your... Okay, let's keep going. So, play Mox Amber. Go 
Could play another Emery to mill some more, but Jay seems fine. I think I still mill myself first one more time. In case we can find another Mox Amber, that'll speed things up. Alright, and then now we should be in the clear. So, these can go. Play a bunch of Mox Ambers, and then now we can start milling the opponent. Luckily doesn't take as long to combo kill the opponent as it did in the past. With uh, Excavator especially, it was pretty excruciating. So, activate again. Just make sure to leave Jace and Mox Amber in there. Don't think there's any way our opponent can deal 10 damage in their upkeep before they draw from their library. cards left, so two more Jaces will do it. Your mind to will. Could even use Jace's second ability here, so we draw three, because why not? And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a fine hand. Turn one star, turn two, got a few options. Hoping to find Mox Amber, probably. Turn one discard. It's gonna take Kinnon. Unless they just value shutting off the card draw with Chromatic Star. If they already have an answer to Emery in hand. But yeah, Kinnon makes sense. So we'll go for Emery. And then we could actually sacrifice the chromatic star here so we get to draw although i don't know if there's really an advantage to doing so if our opponent could have a discard spell so i'll just cast emery normally but yeah you can cast emery with a discount and then still sacrifice chromatic star after the discount's been applied but before we paid the mana similar to how you can like play a muxus with a discount from the uh, goblin war chief and then still sacrifice that same war chief to a Skirk Prospector. Can be pretty tricky. Did mill double Mox Amber, so that's nice. And a Thought Seize will take our second Emery. And Kethys is nice. Might have been a reason to play a different land last turn. So step one, probably get back a Mox Amber. Unless we want to just draw more with Chromatic Star. But having a Mox Amber in play is quite helpful. And then we could use Chromatic Star for mana fixing. To help uh, play Kethys, of course. So that seems worthwhile. Finding Tyvar, which can get back Kinnon. And... Uh, yeah, could play another Mox Amber here, getting rid of Ottawara and Emery. And then I can also play Kinnon, sure. So these legendary lanes are quite useful. Won't be able to get back Emery with Tyvar, but Kinnon's good to go. And can also untap Emery to get an extra activation, which results in two extra mana with Mox Amber right now. So despite some hand disruption, we're off to a nice start. Which is Vengeance, okay. So it takes care of Emery. 
which is the one we cannot get back with Tyvar. Take our turn. And then... Could always look to use Kethys' ability. Could also activate Kinnon's ability, perhaps. So we've got a few options. Tyvar blindly milling is also one way to go. And that puts a Planeswalker in play, which is good insurance. And then we could still put Gigantha in hand. Alright, milled Rona, perfect. Can immediately activate it too, thanks to Tyvar. Find a backup Kinnon. Um, sure, we could discard it. Since we have a Tyvar to eventually get it back. And then for now, Gigantha in hand. Don't think we're really in a position to fully combo off, even though I can replay Emery. Thanks to Kethys. That might be worthwhile, actually. So we'll exile Kinnon Kethys to replay Emery. Want to keep Mox Amber. And a Soul Cauldron could also come in handy. Can immediately activate Emery to get back Soul Cauldron or Chromatic Star. Uh, let's see here. I guess for now, Chromatic Star seems fine. Play that. Make some blue. Find Buseju. Can play another Mox Amber for extra mana. But first we want to activate Runa. We can play Plaza. Play Mox Amber. And find another Emery. Okay. Anything else we want to do here? Think we're good for now. Just put Gigantha in hand. And attack for five. And then I'm pretty sure next turn we'll find a way to combo, since we have so many resources. Kath is down. That's fair. No Kath is in the graveyard, but with Cauldron we'll be able to copy the ability. So, not a big deal. So we might want to start there. Play Cauldron. Activate Rona. Can also immediately tap Gigantha for mana here, which is pretty nice. So quite a few options available. Can untap one of our creatures as well. So a wealth of options for sure. I'll hang on to the Abandoned Mire, another way to get back some of our key creatures. And then maybe go for Chromatic Star instead of Mox. Just want to find a Jace here, pretty much. Take my hand. Mox would untap Rona as well. Could always play another Emery. I guess we're a little bit light on mana here. And I've already used Tyvar, so I guess that's it for now. Unless we want to exile Kethys with Cauldron. And then use its ability. Counter on Kinnon is fine. Play the Mox. And then we can now sacrifice Chromatic Star. Let's 
finding another mox. I guess we can activate Kinnon's ability. Finding a backup Kethys. Could play Emery just to mill a few more cards. And there's Jace. Does so Emery get back Mox? May as well activate Runa. And I think we're good to go now. Activate Kethys. Play a couple more Mox Ambers. Mill myself with Jace first and then we can start milling the opponents. Six cards remaining. Actually, no second Jace yet, so I might actually want to draw and discard to try and find one. Since that might speed things up a little bit, there we go. Four cards left, so probably don't want to draw anymore. So I'll need a few more Jaces. But still plenty of cards we can exile here with Kethys. And we're making six mana every time. Two more Jace activations will do it. And we're good on mana. Alright, we got there. I guess our opponent's out of cards, so... Yeah, just pass a turn, and that should do it. Sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a fine hand up against Alurus. So we can expect some discard effects, perhaps. Or it might be an Aura deck, which is probably going to be a tough matchup. Might need to hold Soaring City for interaction. Fragment Reality does not get us anything in return, sadly. Okay, can go for Rona, since Kinnon doesn't do a whole lot for us. And I'll hang on to Soaring City for now. Looks like Jeskai and a Lightning Helix on Rona, so it looks like Control. Okay. Chromatic Star's pretty good alongside Emery and Kinnon. Can maybe start there. Go Chromatic Star plus Emery. And 
and then we could potentially loop Chromatic Star with Emery next turn to draw additional cards, and with Kinon generate additional mana. Cauldron's also pretty nice. If Gethys ends up in the graveyard, we can still copy the ability, even though we do miss out on the one mana discount in that case. Expressive Iteration goes digging. Finding a Reprieve, not the best with Iteration here. Okay, so step one, play Kinon. Sacramatic Star for blue. And then can get it back with Emery. Or we can go for Soul Cauldron, which might be our last opportunity to get it back. Not sure if our opponent's playing any 4 mana sweepers. I should be playing around. Could also put Gigantha in our hand here. Instead of playing Rona, if we want to play around a sweeper a bit better. Which is not unreasonable. But uh, let's go for the creature. Could use the additional draw and discard since we've got a few too many lanes. Can be a containment priest and a fragment reality which prevents us from getting the halfling since containment priest shuts it down okay so we can go for kathis here not too many legendaries in the graveyard so let's start by looping back chromatic star Maybe make some green mana here. Find a backup Kethys. So we can run one out there. Maybe using Plaza to save on life. And then for now, pass it back. Snapcaster on Fragment Reality again. It's gonna get rid of Kethys, I'm sure. Good thing we have a backup. Okay. So now we can play Kathis with Plaza of Heroes to protect. But let's get our value of Chromatic Star. Another star. And a Mox Amber. Okay. So we can play Kethys. I would like to leave up Plaza of Heroes. And then we're not going off with Kethys this turn, or Graveyard's still the same. Next turn we can look into activating Kinon's ability as well. And not too surprised with the attack, opponent might have multiple burn spells that they want to use to finish off our creature. And uh, yeah, Mana Confluence also starts adding up, but I don't think we want to put Kethys in harm's way. One plus activation may not be enough if our opponent has multiple instants. So we get to untap, find another plaza. Okay, so how much mana are we working with? Six, seven, eight, nine. Start with Emery. And 
and a halfling that can still be useful at maybe making some spells uncounterable in the future. If I want to activate Kinon, I would have to do it now, since I'm not going to have enough mana in the opponent's turn. Or we can go for Gigantha, which is also reasonable. Let's go digging. We'll find another Cathas at some point if they exile it here. And we missed. That's unfortunate. Charm to steal the Mox Amber now. Okay. And adoration to go digging. Probably have to block the Containment Priest now. And then we still have Soul Cauldron to get Kathis' ability if they destroy it without exiling. Just uh, have to be careful we don't die to a flurry of burn spells here. So we'll start with Emery, get back Chromatic Star. Back up Emery. I guess we'll maybe fill the graveyard some more for us. Finding another Mox Amber is nice. Okay, so can put Gigantha in hand and go shields down on Plaza. Or we can just pass with Plaza available, which I also don't mind. Opponent replays Lurus, giving them access to Containment Priest. And with Mox Amber, they can still cast it. Alright, let's activate Kinon. Puts us to 4. So, almost dead to a Lightning Helix. Opponent debating whether they want to tap out for Containment Priest here, so we don't get our card from Kinon. Or if they want to leave up, probably a Reprieve or some other counterspell. Put on Ghost for it. Okay. So we'll decline. Take our turn. And there's a Rona. Okay, so... Don't have too many Legendaries in the Graveyard still. So we really would like to find a Jace. Thing that beats Mox Amber here. Find a cauldron instead. Can give Emery's ability to one of our creatures. And there's Jace. All right. Mill ourselves for as much as possible. Finding another Mox Amber. So I think we're pretty much in the clear now. Get rid of a land and cauldron. And now we can start milling the opponents. I will 
Shatter your mother. Could still die in their upkeep if they have two burn spells, so if possible I don't want to tap mana confluence. Okay, so our opponent's completely milled out. See Lightning Helix in the graveyard. That's all four of them. Don't see any other burn spells. And then anything else we can do here while we're at it? Um, I guess play Rona. And that's about it. Maybe Tyvar. Although that requires me going through the loop again. I guess with Containment Priest it doesn't do a whole lot. But her opponent hasn't conceded yet, so they might have some plan. So, yeah, just gonna pass a turn here and hope there's no upkeep shenanigans. Alright, sweet, and our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and we're missing some artifacts, perhaps, to go with Kinnon and Emery, but I'll still try it. If we mill Mox Amber or even Chromatic Star with Emery, that's gonna be pretty effective. And a backup Gethus in case of discard could also make a difference. Opponent looks like a, a reanimator or self-mill deck. Okay, so don't expect too much in the way of interaction and Soul Cauldron could also exile a card like Bloodgast before it comes back, although this one's probably gonna hit the battlefield. And now with Cauldron we can also discount Emery, so that helps. Another looting. Maybe discarding a second Bloodgast, yep. And a prize amalgam. Alright, that's a lot of damage early. If only we were on the play to play a turn 2 cauldron, could have slowed them down. Jace. Well, I can still play cauldron. And then next turn, Kethis at least blocks pretty well. And then now I can exile Rally the Peasants before our opponent gets a chance to cast it. Although, might be better off keeping it to exile another creature. But Rally is also a way they could then attack past Kethis. So I think it's worthwhile to just do now. Before they flash it back and deal an additional 8 damage. Looks like they have one in hand. Okay, so we're at 3. And yeah, I don't think we're surviving this. Can play Kethis, block Amalgam, still take 5. Alright, GG's. Anything else we can do? Doesn't look like it. Yeah, I haven't seen Rally the Peasants before in these types of decks, but makes a lot of sense. And a Creeping Chill hard cast will also get the job done. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a promising hand. Halfling into Urona, Jace to start milling. Just missing our namesake card. Our opponent Esper Colors. There's a Mox Amber. Okay, so we'll kick things off with Rona tapping the Halfling. And then pass for now. Ah, 
Still nothing from our opponent. Let's start with a rune activation. And there's Kethys. Okay. So probably start with Jace for the full amount. Could also play Mox Amber here. Get another Rune activation. And then play Jace. I do want to tap the Halfling again. Absorb's not gonna work. And then we eventually want to mill ourselves with Jace. Although, yeah, that's enough for a concession. Opponent not reading the Halfling's ability. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems keepable. Double Mox Amber, so just missing Kethys. And then Kinon plus Mox Amber, also quite good. Opponent on Ninjas. Play one of the Mox Ambers, could play both and already play Jace if we wanted to, which is not unreasonable. And then I could shrink down the opponent's creature, but with zero power it's not all that threatening. Our opponent will be able to ninjutsu next turn regardless of me shrinking it down. So let's just mill ourselves and draw a card. No secret escapes my grasp. Okay, opponent's gonna be drawing here. So it turns out plusing with Jace would have been helpful after all. I guess we can do it now. Put your gun in hand. And uh, I guess I'll just hang back. Don't see a point in attacking for two. Another Kinon. Well, next turn we can activate Kinon as well. Another research on the Drake this time. At least if they attack my Planeswalker they don't get to draw, so our opponent goes face. Okay, Chromatic Star is nice. Do we want to plus Jace? Probably still. Find a backup Jace, and I'll just activate Kinon here. Finding Kethys, perfect. So we have Mox Amber, which we could replay. And I have a Jace as well. But I think we wait until next turn to combo off, since I can mill myself a whole bunch with the initial Jace, play another one. And then we should be off to the races. Opponent's gonna bounce. Alright, so they might have a counter spell on the way down. Another Drake. And another Mox Amber. So first I want to make sure Kethys resolves before I commit to milling with Jace. It does not. And 
which case we could activate Kinon once again. Find a halfling. And then still gonna plus Jace here. Maybe should have targeted one of the Drakes this time to protect Jace a bit better. Now with Halfling we can make a future Kethys uncounterable. Okay, so let's see here. Start with the Kinon activation. And I don't think we want to necessarily tap the Halfling for it. Find Emery. Okay, Soul Cauldron would help if we get it back next turn. So for now, keep on plussing, I guess. And go for either Drake or Operative still. They will be able to take down Jace next turn. But we've got a backup. Our opponent may be considering using a protection spell. Could try and activate Kethys again with the Mox Amber as well. Now we get to leave a plaza. And then we can activate this at any point. Retreat. So we'll probably need to fight through a few counter spells. But I'm pretty sure we'll be able to set up the combo next turn. Find Kethys, that helps. And get to untap. Okay, so step one, play Jace. Can make it uncounterable. Mill myself for as much as possible. Okay, nice full graveyard. And then play another Mox Amber. Can activate Emery to either get back another Mox Amber or Cauldron. Might be better insurance. Opponent's counters, sure. Activate Kethys, exiling some lands. And then we're off to the races. Could also consider playing Tyvar. So I can uh, immediately activate Emery, as well as maybe Arona in the graveyard. Can untap Emery as well. And yeah, that's enough for a concession. Can just mill ourselves a bit more with Jace if needed. But I think we've got enough stuff in graveyard where we can just loop Jace milling the opponent. And it's only going to take two or three to win the game. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a fine hand. Can play a turn to Emery 
and then we're setting up for an early Kethys with a Moxamber already up against Lurus, so can definitely expect a discard spell early on. So I'm deciding whether or not I want to play Mox Amber or hold it. I think I will play it out. In case your opponent has a Duress, they won't be able to take away any spells. Okay, so now go for Emery. And we can sack Chromatic Star. Probably for blue. And we can play Kinon, perfect. Fatal Push deals with Kinon. Can't take out Emery since it's 3 mana. But we can still get back our Chromatic Star for value. And then... Can use Sorting City to make black, so we can play Kethys here. And then I don't think we're doing anything else this turn. Opponent passes with three mana. Another Mox Ambers, interesting. So could attempt to get back Kinon, and then these Mox Ambers will generate a lot more mana. So let's try it. Actually might want to play another Mox Amber first, just to get that in the graveyard as well. Play Kinon. And then now we can tap for two mana before playing another. Snapcaster on Fatal Push. We'll take out Kinon once again. But we can protect with Plaza of Heroes if we'd like. Does seem worthwhile. And our opponent explodes, alright. Emery get back Chromatic Star, draws another card, makes more mana. Can look to Gigantha in hand, or we can even make enough mana to start activating Kinon and take over. So yeah, Kethys combo remains one of the pillars in Historic. Now it's still going to be somewhat soft to some of the hyper-aggressive starts out there, and uh, decks like Blue-Red Wizards especially that have aggression plus a bit of interaction to kill some of our key creatures. Those matchups are going to be especially tough, but any more mid-range or control matchup, our deck has a lot of tools to kind of outgrind them, so that's where the deck wants to be. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.